Yeah, so it's been a long process uh, for Tyler. Uh, we know from spring training when you know, he got shut down, and it's been a long exploration exactly what the problem has been. Uh, it's been, and I'm not an expert on thoracic outlet syndrome. But it's, I don't know that I've ever had a guy, maybe other guy that's ever had it. But it's uh, a situation where a lot of other avenues are exhausted before they get to this perspective. So I know it was a frustrating situation for him at times because he'd feel good and then wouldn't feel quite as good and keep going forward on it. And about, uh, oh, it must be about three weeks ago, uh, we took him to a specialist in the Boston area, Dr. Donahue, and he had thought that he had thoracic outlet syndrome at that point. He treated it uh, with, uh, with Botox shots. Apparently that's how you treat that. Uh, made some strides, but again, didn't get through it. And then Dr. Thompson uh, is it one of the other specialists in the country that's done some surgeries on pitchers. And he flew out there to see him on Tuesday. And later in the day on Tuesday, they, they recommended that they feel that like this is the problem. They finally feel that the only way to correct it after giving the both five signs is to, uh, is to have the surgery. So it's a very unfortunate situation for him. But I think it's also a relief that somebody's finally been able to come to the conclusion of what his problems have been. Is this, is this something you guys could have known that he had before you came? No. There's no way we'd ever know that he had thoracic outlet syndrome. And there are guys, uh, when I talked to his agents, again, I said, I haven't had many of them. Um, they said they had a few of these. And so, no, you would, you would not know that. No, uh, Matt Harvey has had it in the past um, and obviously hasn't been quite the same since. Um, I don't know. I know the release said that you expect him back at the beginning of next year, but I, is there anything, I guess, knowing Harvey's situation that maybe... Um... Well, I can't compare it to Matt Harvey, so I don't know enough about it. I can just tell you what the doctor said, that his anticipation is that he will... It's a, it can be a major surgery, but they won't know until they get in there what they're actually going to do, which they're, originally was scheduled for June 30th. They were trying to move it up. It's about a nine-month process till he's ready, to, what they tell me, until he's ready to get on the mound and be ready to pitch in a major league game. So uh, an opening ended up taking place last night. I got a call last night from Brad, uh, and he said that something's opened up, so Tyler would like to have it on Friday. He said, sure, let's, go. let's get it done as quickly as we possibly can. But I really don't know the exact, because there are different ways that surgeries can be done. There's also different ways that nerve and blood flow can be affected, and uh, I'm not sure if it's exactly that. So at this point, it's unclear if a rib would be removed? Uh, I can't say it's for sure. I would say it's probable. Uh, I think that that is uh, most likely. His is up here. That's where his is. You said any? it's nine months until he's major league ready? Yes. That's what, it That's what they're telling me, Chris. So, so, I mean, he's gone through his rehab, he's thrown, he's ready. Pitching a game in nine months is what they said. Again, I'm sure that doesn't mean uh, can't be ten months or can't be eight months, but that's what they tell me is the time period. Is there any sense of what might have caught, like, has he always had it? Is there any kind of sense of the background of, of how this developed with him? Well, you always have it. You're born with a system that basically you, that uh, you're susceptible to getting it. When he traces back to some things that he had last year, I'm sure he, I'm sure he had it then. Um, but it's again, it's not something that you look to treat right away. You look for shoulder strength, and uh, he did some chiropractic work last year, so he got himself through it. He felt fine and through throughout the year. So, um, but every but when you have it, it's not something that just develops. But you, you know, your, your ribs which basically cause a problem because that causes the pinching in most cases. I mean, they're, they're not straight, they pinch. So, yes, uh, now, why it ends up happening at a certain time, because they tell me sometimes guys have it and they just keep on pinching, but they just never really know. When you say last year, just what, what is he referring to that he, had, he dealt with last year? Well, he had some issues last year where he had like a chiropractic treatment, but he said that he just didn't feel quite For right. the shoulder? Yeah, I don't know exactly. I don't know. He just said in his shoulder. I don't know exactly what it was, but uh, he said that. But there was never any indication that there was any major problems in there. But when a trade kind of happens with the way it's happened with this one, do you, do you 
regret it? You look back on well, I mean, it, you know, it's just one of those things that happen when you make trades at times. It's, it's buyer beware. Um, there's no way you would know this. Uh, you just hope that you got a healthy player back by next year and it ends up taking place. And, and I've got guys throughout my career I've traded that unfortunately got hurt in places. And you're not, I don't believe in any way that when I say that, that Milwaukee knew that this was taking place, they gave us all the information. They, you know, they, they, there's no question that they were very upfront in that regard. Uh, it's just a very unfortunate situation, and you just want to get the player healthy and move on from there. You, when you look at Travis Shaw's performance this year, do you go back and say, did we evaluate him properly? I really wouldn't talk about the organization player at this point. It's really the proper thing for me to do. Is third, is third base a position, Dave, that you would be looking to upgrade or add to? Well, you know, again, I think that, you know, of course, that's the question of the few weeks here, and I think it's a situation. You know, every club always has a one spot that people, because everybody has a weakness. Um, we're pretty solid in most positions. Um, so third base has been one area. I think we still need a spot to kind of see how Pablo plays through this. Uh, early in the season, first of all, starting the spring training, he did very well for us. We were very excited. And I think you also have to remember that Pablo has done everything that we asked him to do got himself in shape. He's worked very hard. He's continued to work hard. Uh, he's worked on the dietary aspect of it. He's worked on the skill aspect of it. Uh, so when I came in here, he was working out. So he's done everything he possibly can. He had a very good spring training. Early in the season, his numbers weren't great. But yet he hit the ball very hard. He was one of the top five in the league, statistically, as far as hard hit balls when he went down at that time. So he's just come back for a short time period. I thought he had a very good game last night, uh, offensively and defensively. So I think sometimes you have to give guys an opportunity before you just jump to the conclusions right away. And uh, we'll continue to monitor the situation. It's up to him to do well, and we'll see what takes place. With the, um, not to say Pablo specifically, but what in your mind is a good number of at-bats or games to properly evaluate that? Yeah, I can't even answer that question. I don't know that there is a 100% answer to that. Everybody's different. Uh, some guys get back quicker than others. Um, in his case, he's not playing per se every single day. Uh, he hasn't been so far, at least. Uh, he admit people were getting missed all last year, basically, too. So I think that's another part of it. So I, I don't really have a certain number of specific paths here. Carson Smith left today. Where is he uh, headed off to? Well, he's going back to Boston. Uh, that's always been the plan. I don't know if he's going to go on rehab or what we're going to do with him at this point, but it was always the plan for the possibility for him to uh, go back there and we'll just evaluate how he feels tomorrow and go from there. Is he having soreness? Well, he's having normal soreness as anybody would at this time when he's been thrown. Not necessarily even in his elbow, just normal soreness when he's thrown. So we'll just analyze to see how he's doing. I think every pitcher has soreness after they throw, so that's why I, I'm not. Uh, Is this something that was planned regardless of? Yes. Okay, so it's not that he, something happened today? That, no. Okay. No, he was always planning on going back. We are either planning on him going back, because uh, the possibility exists that he would go out and he would go on rehab. So if that possibility exists, but if he's not ready to do it, then we'll get him double checked again by doctors and so we'll get him checked up at that point. What, what, what is your expectation of Brian Jones? Spot in the rotation? Well, um, I'll let John answer his spot in the rotation. Uh, but he's on the DL. Uh, they think it's infl it is inflammation at this point. Um, so he's going to go back to Boston either later today or tomorrow. I'm not sure the exact flight time since I just got here. But, and you'll see the doctor there with the uh, The feeling is that with the strength is what he has at this point, that it's inflammation and that it should not be a long process. Of course, I'm the Was it your feeling that Smith, by this point, would be back? Has, he, has it gone a little slower lately than you guys would have expected? That, Carson, Carson. Not necessarily. I mean, I, I don't. I, I've learned throughout the years. They say about a year. Sometimes it's 14 months. Sometimes it's 10 months. Um, I really kind of just in these situations, the expectations. I I don't really have a specific expectations. You kind of go along with it. But I, if you said 14 months, it wouldn't surprise me at all. What's your assessment of the draft? We liked it. But I mean, like I was, somebody asked me inside there, I said, I, you always like your draft early in the which you haven't done, but we liked it. We, we felt fortunate to get out near the end of the first round. Uh, when you're drafting
drafted 24 like White we did. A lot of players are going to go before you like him. So he's a guy that we like. We like Brennan a lot for a second round draft choice. Uh, we got some guys that fell through that we didn't necessarily think were going to fall through. Now we have to get them all signed too. But we liked it. We liked it a great deal. A couple of your guys have indicated on their social media that they're, they're in the organization now. Is, has anybody actually been signed to this point? Or is well, I'm glad they feel that way. Um, but no, <laughs> and the reason I would say that no, because um, and they get a little exuberant, which is great. Um, we feel, but they have to all get physicals. Okay. So they have to undergo a physical, and so the draft just finished. So we haven't had a chance to get anybody with physicals. I would anticipate those will be taking place. Probably not the next couple of days in some cases. What are you and guys then after that, we'll be ready. One of you guys mentioned he was flying to Fort Myers. I assumed he wasn't going to the beach or anything. So. Well, I don't maybe, but maybe he has a summer home there. I don't know, but um, but, but it's one of those where um, you know we get physicals there and we get some of them in Boston too. Okay. So I mean, there are guys that we have agreed to terms, sure. subject to them passing physicals, but we don't announce them until they right. pass the physicals. Good. I'll set. Thanks, Thanks, you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome.